Hello, it's video three of blood lecture, lecture blood. Still on erythrocytes. As I mentioned, they live for about 100 uh, to 120 days, at which point they begin to uh, lose function. The proteins break down over time. They don't last forever. So you've got these nice handy macrophages. And we'll talk a little bit about macrophages later, but macrophages are, that means big eater, macrophage. And a macrophage is kind of a variation of one of your leukocytes, which I'll be discussing. So these guys swim around and they scarf up these old blood cells. Oftentimes it's in your uh, spleen and uh, they'll break them down. They'll keep the iron because that's valuable and uh, recycle a lot of the amino acids. They'll degrade all the other components into a molecule called bilirubin. And bilirubin sounds like a sandwich, but it's a uh, molecule that you secrete in bile. There's, that's the B-I-L prefix. So it's a bilirubin, probably. Well, bilirubin is converted ultimately to a molecule called stercobilin. Stercobilin is brown, and you secrete it in the bile, which goes from your gallbladder to your, uh, to your intestines and is ultimately released in feces. So the reason your um, feces are brownish is largely due to this pigment right here, which is a derivative of your blood cells. So you may have heard that there's blood in your feces. Well, if it's red blood, you go see a doctor. If it's just the brown breakdown product of a, uh, some components, then don't worry about it, that's normal. What can go wrong? Well, if you've got uh, too few blood cells, you're anemic. If you've got too many, you're polycythemic. So anemia means without blood or lacking blood. Polycythemia means lots of blood, many blood. Here's a short list. Hemorrhagic, hemorrhage, right? Hemorrhaging is, is bleeding. So if you lose blood, if you cut yourself open and you get a bleeder, uh, you could have hemorrhagic anemia, hopefully temporarily. Hemolytic, and here's... This is why I try to ask you guys to, to break down these words. Hemolysis. Hemo is blood. Lysis is breaking. So hemolytic, if you know what that word means, if you can understand the roots of it, blood breaking, rupturing. Uh, this can be due to various uh, infections or uh, uh, health, other health issues. Aplastic means that you are without the ability to make it. So aplastic means basically low production and it's usually from marrow damage of some sort so if you've got radiated marrow or uh, it can happen with some other marrow diseases but low production basically aplastic iron deficiency this is probably the most common kind that we think of uh, if you don't get enough iron in your diet or if you have hemorrhaged or are hemorrhaging you may go into an iron deficit well uh, females tend to be more iron deficient anemic than males, largely because of menstruation. Uh, the females actually lose blood during menstruation and it needs to be recouped in your diet, which is another, which is also the reason why if you ever look at uh, vitamin, multivitamins, if they say if they're just generic or they're for men, they won't have much if any iron, but females will have a larger iron uh, content in those vitamins. Pernicious, this is that vitamin D deficiency I was talking about earlier. If you don't have vitamin D, you can't make DNA. If you don't have DNA, you can't make the blood cells. And renal anemia, this is if you don't make enough or any uh, erythropoietin, you're not going to stimulate enough uh, erythropoiesis. Uh, okay, more on erythrocytes, as you can see, there's lots. More disorders. Uh, so we're still talking about some anemias. And this moves on to the idea of if your hemoglobin is ab abnormal and or your cells destroy themselves or blow up. Um, thalassemias are a big class of disorders that uh, are genetic and result in, in thin membranes and very fragile red blood cells. And sickle cell anemia is, excuse me, a single genetic uh, disorder that can result in your blood cells deforming under situations where there is an oxygen deficit. Now, I'm not going to go into the genetics of it right here. I'll talk about that later in the genetics chapter. But let's suffice it to say that if you have no copies of sickle cell anemia, you have got completely normal human blood, right? Regular run-of-the-mill blood. 
If you've got one copy of the sickle cell anemia trait, you have what's called the sickle cell trait or you are a carrier and you see the term carrier here. Uh, the individuals that are carriers tend to be fine under most cir uh, circumstances but will experience problems under conditions of low oxygen in the atmosphere. Uh, sometimes you'll hear about NFL players, I, this is the, the ones I hear about, NFL players who pass on the trip to Denver because it's at altitude because they are sickle cell uh, carriers. However, these individuals are much more resistant to malaria. Big deal, right? There's no malaria around here. Well, where this uh, gene evolved was in populations that had, were exposed to uh, malaria. As such, people of African descent tend to carry this gene at a higher frequency than people of European descent or other uh, ancestries. Uh, and it, in fact, it is more common in Central Africa where there is a high incident of malaria because if you've got one of the, one of the genes, you're going to be much more resistant to, to, from dying from malaria. Uh, but if you've got both, if you've got both uh, genes with the sickle cell trait, that's really pretty dangerous and most individuals don't live very long without uh, really intense medical treatment. Lastly are polycythemias, meaning many blood cells. Uh, the problem with having too many blood cells is that your blood becomes too viscous. Viscous means thick and, uh, you know, resistant to flow. So uh, one type of marrow cancer results in loads too many red blood cells being produced, and that's polycythemia vera. It can be secondary due to low atmospheric con uh, O2 concentration. If you go train at elevation, if I go to Flagstaff, Arizona for six months and run, you know, laps, I'm going to end up with a lot more red blood cells. So it's a secondary polycythemia, probably not dangerous. Uh, and matter of fact, it may help my performance. Uh, this is why people uh, train at elevation and also dope on EPO or red blood cells. If you save your red blood cells and inject them or inject EPO into yourself, you're just going to make more red blood cells. And this is what they red flag at athletic competitions is too much of either of these beyond the realm of normal altitude training. Uh, that's it for video three.